So friends, the New York Times just broke a story about another tape, another audio recording in the Donald Trump classified documents crimes case. But this tape isn't of Donald Trump. This tape was made by one of Donald Trump's lawyers. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, the New York Times just published a story that is, to use a legal term, mind-blowing. Okay, technically, mind-blowing is not a legal term. But this new reporting involves the revelation that there is another audio tape, but this time not of Donald Trump. This time, it's an audio tape that one of Donald Trump's lawyers, Evan Corcoran, made as a memo to himself about his representation of Donald Trump in the classified documents investigation. And this tape is now in the hands of special counsel Jack Smith's federal prosecutors. So I actually want to read a fair bit of the New York Times reporting, and then I want to talk from personal experience about attorney Evan Corcoran, because I worked with Evan at the DC U.S. Attorney's Office. In fact, years ago, we worked a murder case in common. But let's start with the New York Times reporting. Headline, Trump's lawyer's notes could be a key in the classified documents inquiry. M. Evan Corcoran, recorded recollections of his legal work last year for Donald Trump. The recording is now in the hands of the prosecutors, unnerving some aides to the former president. And that article begins, turning on his iPhone one day last year, lawyer Evan Corcoran recorded his reflections about a high profile new job representing former President Donald Trump in an investigation into his handling of classified documents. In complete sentences and a narrative tone that sounded as if it had been ripped from a novel, Mr. Corcoran recounted in detail a nearly month-long period of the document's investigation, according to two people familiar with the matter. Mr. Corcoran's narration of his recollections covered his initial meeting with Mr. Trump in May last year to discuss a subpoena from the Justice Department seeking the return of all classified materials in the former president's possession. It also encompassed a search that Mr. Corcoran undertook last June in response to the subpoena for any relevant records being kept at Mar-a-Lago, Mr. Trump's private club and residence in Florida. He carried out the search in preparation for a visit by prosecutors who were, who were on their way to enforce the subpoena and collect any sensitive material found remaining there. Government investigators almost never obtain a clear lens into a lawyer's private dealings with their clients, let alone with such a prominent one as Mr. Trump. A recording like the voice memo Mr. Corcoran made last year during a long drive to a family event is typically shielded by attorney-client privilege or work product privilege. But in March, a federal judge ordered Mr. Corcoran's recorded recollections, now transcribed onto dozens of pages, to be given to the office of the special counsel, Jack Smith, who is leading the document's investigation. The decision by Judge Beryl Howell pierced the privilege that would have normally protected Mr. Corcoran's musings about his interactions with Mr. Trump. Those protections were set aside under what is known as the crime fraud exception, a provision that allows prosecutors to work around attorney-client privilege if they have reason to believe that legal advice or legal services were used in furtherance of a crime. 
Judge Howell, in a sealed memorandum that accompanied her decision, made clear that prosecutors believe Mr. Trump knowingly misled Mr. Corcoran about the location of documents that would be responsive to the subpoena. Now, friends, let me read that again. The evidence suggests, quote, Mr. Trump knowingly misled Mr. Corcoran about the location of documents that would be responsive to the subpoena. Friends, that assertion right there, if proven, equals obstruction of justice, a 20-year federal offense. Now, it doesn't surprise me that Donald Trump would lie to his lawyers, that Donald Trump would mislead his lawyers, that Donald Trump would unwittingly enlist his lawyers in his crime of obstructing justice, trying to hide, conceal, secrete, classified documents that Trump had stolen from the federal government, was retaining at Mar-a-Lago, refusing to return them even when they were subpoenaed. It doesn't surprise me that Donald Trump lied about all of that. But the result of Donald Trump's lies is an application of the crime fraud exception to the attorney-client privilege means that Evan Corcoran's tape that he made as a memo to self was directed by the judge to be turned over to the prosecutors. Friends, imagine that. The article relates that Evan Corcoran is on a long drive and he is making a recording to himself. Presumably, that recording has his innermost thoughts and experiences about representing Donald Trump. One has to believe he was being candid, he was being honest, he was being complete, he wasn't pulling any punches, never dreaming that that tape, that audio recording, would ultimately be listened to by prosecutors. Now let me talk just for a minute about Evan Corcoran. I worked with Evan at the DC U.S. Attorney's Office in the 90s into the early 2000s. We even had a case in common, a homicide case. He and another colleague tried a particular homicide defendant. The case hung. Thereafter, I, I assumed responsibility for the case and handled the retrial. So I talked with and coordinated closely with Evan as I was preparing the retrial. And my impressions of Evan from back then was he was a, a somewhat quiet, thoughtful, circumspect, smart lawyer who typically performed well in court. In fact, I saw him again when he was representing Steve Bannon at Steve Bannon's criminal trial, which I attended, which I covered. And I spoke with Evan during that case. I told him I thought he did the best he could with what he had. Of course, Steve Bannon was convicted, but sadly, unjustly, Steve Bannon is at liberty pending appeal rather than serving the sentence he should be serving. And I thought Evan Corcoran did a, um, an admirable job, a respectable job, and a respectful job representing Steve Bannon during that criminal trial. Um, it's a little surprising and a little disappointing that he found himself in a position where he was comfortable certifying that a diligent search of Mar-a-Lago had been made and all classified documents had been returned when we would later learn that he apparently was not permitted or steered away from searching Donald Trump's office proper, where just a couple of months later, the FBI would obtain and execute a search warrant and find tons of classified documents in Donald Trump's office, indeed in his desk drawers. But according to this New York Times reporting, Donald Trump misled Evan Corcoran about the fact that, you know, all these documents had been returned when clearly 
they had not been returned. But as a result, you know, Donald Trump suffers the consequences because that audio recording made by Evan Corcoran as a memo to self about his representation of Donald Trump is now in the hands of prosecutors and friends. I have to believe that will be some important evidence in the future trial of Donald Trump for his classified documents crimes because there will be a trial. There will be an indictment. Given recent revelations about, among other things, Donald Trump's unlawfully retaining classified documents concerning a possible military strike on Iran, retaining them, waving them around, in a very real sense, disclosing, disseminating some information about them in a meeting to people who had no security clearance, had no right to hear about even one word or the subject matter of that classified document. I absolutely believe that Donald Trump will be indicted for those crimes. I also happen to think June may be the month. In fact, June is likely to be the month. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.